Yo, what's up, everybody out there? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. You already know, at Doggy Diamonds on Twitter, at Doggy Diamonds on Instagram. Um, ForbesDVD.com is the website. Forbes DVD promo is the YouTube. Um, Shout out to everybody who always be supporting and, you know, holler at me and shit. The real people, the authentic people. And I didn't do a PSA in a while because I didn't want to run the shits in a hole. I didn't want y'all to get tired of them or, you know... I don't know anything. I believe in quality over quantity. I believe in doing things that have substance opposed to just doing things, you know, just to flood the market or whatever. You know, I have a website. I got access to YouTube. I have, you know, y'all is, is um people who listen, you know, the viewers. So I could put out something every day, but I just don't believe in doing that, you know talking loud and ain't saying nothing so I, I kind of wanted to wait till I had something that I wanted to talk about um the name of this one right here is who are you fighting for and what are you fighting for mainly I should just say what are you fighting for and I was inspired to do this because you know I got a tweet from somebody and shout out to them because they kind of explained to me why they said what they said but they said to me, um, you know, I fuck with you, but you always bitching on Twitter. Now, I took offense to that statement because, yeah, I might come off like I'm always bitching and complaining, but I'm not complaining for me. I'm okay. Financially, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm doing very well financially to be somebody who's uneducated by society standards, I don't have a piece of paper. I dropped out of school in 10th grade. I don't have a piece of paper. I never went back to school. Don't have a GED. But I could take apart a studio, put one together, code a website, run a website, market and promote artists, film, edit videos, upload them and promote them, film, edit DVDs, put them together and put them out and distribute them, amongst other things. So I did okay. And these are some of the things that People go to school for and people want to do or people aspire to do that I do on the grand scale. And I've been on every website on the internet that's major that people look at. I've been on those from MTV to Media Takeout. So I'm not angry. You know what I'm saying? And I make bread. The website is successful. You could look at where we rank at amongst other websites that we're black owned. We don't have no hand up our back. Pulling out strings. We take a lot of risk by the content we put up there. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody else putting the content we put. Now, I'm not talking about videos of somebody getting bust over their fucking head or some girl shaking her ass. I'm talking about, y'all know what content I'm talking about. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? The content that's for us, by us, to show us in a different light. We take a lot of risk by doing that because... Once you get titled, and it is another website owner that tried to title me a certain way as racist and homophobic and all this shit. Once you get titled with some, you know, some of these titles, you don't eat in this business. You're fucked up. So for us to flourish through all of that and still be here doing our thing, yo, I'm not mad. Putting out successful DVDs, um, got a weekly radio show, doing monthly showcases. Wreck riding around in an old 14 car. You know what I'm saying? And we not mad at nothing, but we do have a fight on our hand. Now, this is the fight. A lot of times in this industry, it's a lot of shit that's fucked up. Now, I'm in this industry. I'm amongst it. A lot of the rappers that y'all worship and praise, I know personally. I've interviewed them. I've been around them. I got their number. I, I, I correspond with them. I be around them from time to time when I feel like it. The, the niggas that you'll probably see and you want a picture of, I don't even take pictures with these niggas. I don't even call niggas phones. I don't want to hang with nobody be nobody friend. Because I ain't nobody. I'm not a fan. I just want to do my job and help my company flourish and that's it. You know what I'm saying? But I see a lot of shit that's going on. That's fucked up for y'all niggas trying to get in. So I be 
bitching about that shit, complaining about that shit, because it's like, yo, shit is fucked up. So a lot of times when niggas come to me a wreck and say, yo, because you helped me to this, that, and the third, it's like, yo, my nigga, I can't help you because they got all these rules and regulations on shit that I'm trying to fight and break to make it easier for me to help you. For example, if you a New Yorker, because everybody got this whole New York, bring New York back, blah, blah, blah. But the same niggas that complain about it is also the niggas who fucked it up. That's another PSA. But if you're a New Yorker, where you going to perform at now? What venues do you have to perform and also get filmed, recorded, put on a major website, put on YouTube and promote it for a measly $200? What venues do you have? These other, these other showcases be charging niggas $1,000 and don't give you shit. So we said, yo, it's nothing in New York. New York is fucked up. This is what we could do in New York. Yeah, it's not BDS. It's not satellite. It's, a, it's not FM. But it's internet radio. So we could have people come to the internet radio station. Get their songs played, get a little 12-minute interview, hang out, bug out, take callers, and get known. We could do showcases. So dudes have an outlet. Because that's all everybody want and need is a shot and an outlet. We could have an outlet. We got the website. We got the YouTube. We got the DVDs. But everybody complaining about New York. And we're fighting amongst all the corporations that see we're not a part of the corporations. We, we, we amongst it, but we're not a part of that. That's the shit we fighting against, the corporate shit that took this hip-hop shit and made it corporate and fucked it up and then tried to resell it to niggas. We trying to take that back. But who's fighting against us? The people that we fight for. The people that I say, how much is, the people that say to me, how much is it to perform at the showcase? And I say $200. $200? Damn, my nigga. I got to rob a bank. But when the new J's come out, you staying amongst 100 people with $200. Or you rapping about all this money you got. Or you taking pictures on your Instagram and all this shit with all this money. But when it comes to something that's for you, that's going to benefit your so-called career, because you that next nigga and all this shit, you don't have no money. Fine. I don't have no issue with that. Because you ain't got to do that. And that's the thing. I don't need your money. I'm good. I already make my bread. I'm good. I don't need your money. But I'm fighting for you. And, and I got to take a little bit of money off you because everything costs. We do a DVD. It costs to put out a DVD, manufacture it, mass produce it. It costs to distribute it. It costs to go from Brooklyn to the Bronx in gas. Y'all know how much gas costs. It costs to ship the shit out. It costs. It costs for posters. It costs. It costs when you run out to re-up. It costs. So if we paying for all this shit, why would we be doing all this shit for free for people who's going to sit there and talk about how much weed they smoked and how many bottles they popped and they make it rain and they ice so blingy and frosty and all these other weird ass shit niggas be saying. Why would we do all this so you could stunt in our face and we helping you? You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense to me. So I'm just like, yo, niggas ain't got to pay me shit. Niggas don't have to fuck with me. I'm good. I'm still going to do my interviews, still going to do my radio show, still going to put out DVDs, and the website is still going to keep growing. But people don't really believe and understand how much of a fight this shit is. And there's no real room in this industry because they don't let niggas in. So... I'm in, barely, fighting to stay in and trying to change shit in so other niggas could get in. Because we not like these some of these dudes we look at. We not like them. And when I say we, I mean me and you, everybody listening. We not like them. We not like them. Most of us are really urban. You know what I'm saying? We really... About this was what we talking about. We really walk amongst our people. And I'm fighting to let y'all in. But more and more, y'all are getting pushed out. Look at what the radio was playing. Look at the people that they're playing, rather. 
Everybody is homeless. When the last time a real, real gangster rapper came out that people were scared of? And people believe that might shoot the whole shit up. They don't let them niggas out. You know what I'm saying? And you might say, well, they're the Chief Keith, Chief Keith. Well, look with Chief Keith. You know, no disrespect to him, but I don't really see shit going too well for him. I see the little niggas, the blind little dudes that don't really know no better following it. But there's a difference between having followers and having a following. You know how you know who fuck with you? Put out something for sale. Sell something. <laughs> when people purchase it, they fuck with you. When niggas say, I ain't got it, they don't fuck with you. Now you look at you look at Twitter. You see people with 12 million followers, 6 million followers, and selling like 100,000 records. Something is wrong with that math. Now either your followers is fake, or they don't fuck with you. Or both. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, we always breaking barriers. We always fighting for people. But I get a lot of flack and a lot of grief for standing up for y'all motherfuckers. Because I could just be quiet like these other niggas. Because I see all the worship and praise to hold this, hold that. Look how many motherfuckers he can help and put on. Do he do it? Do he throw any fucking showcases? In, in, when, when, he ever, when has he ever thrown a showcase? And I'm not disrespecting him or knocking him. But I'm just saying these are the people that you praise. But how do they help you? But you love them. But I'm doing shit that can help all of us. But you popping shit to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just questioning like. Should I just be like everybody else? Count my money in your face? Show you the new J's I bought? Brag to y'all and shit on y'all? And look at y'all like peasants? Is that what y'all like? Y'all like niggas who shit on y'all? That's the people y'all respect? That's who y'all fuck with? People who shit on y'all? And say, yo, if you ain't got this watch, you ain't shit. My watch costs more than your whole crib and your mother house. And that's, what, that's who y'all like? That's who y'all respect? Or y'all respect people who say, yo, let's get it together. I got this. And I'll give it to you for the low. The very low. The bare minimum. And it's still going to benefit all of us. You know what I'm saying? That's, I, I don't know. As I'm just getting real fucking confused. Like, hold up. Who am I fighting for? Why am I fighting for motherfuckers? And, and these the niggas who shitting on me. I, you know, and, and, and I could never really walk in his shoes. But I see how Malcolm X felt. He fighting for the fucking freedom of his of people. And the same people he fighting for is the people who killed them. I don't get it. I'm just confused. So yeah, I be on Twitter popping my shit. You ain't never hear me on Twitter say I'm broke. You ain't never hear me on Twitter say I'm mad because I can't pay my bills. You ain't never see me on Twitter say I'm mad because my website's not doing well. You ain't never see me on Twitter say I'm mad because it was three people in the showcase or the DVD didn't do well. No, everything that I put my mind to and my activities to is prosperous for me. But when it comes to you asking me for my assistance or what I do, I'm not trying to take a million dollars from you. I'm trying to take a little bit of money and just make a lot happen for a little bit of bread. But it's such a big fight for me. Still and all. Because I could take an unsigned dude, unsigned dude and put him on this, that, and the third and try to put him on the DVD next to one of these major acts. And niggas would be like, fuck these bum ass unsigned New York niggas. You need more South niggas on your DVD. Or you need more of these niggas on your DVD. And I'm like, nah, this is the new niggas. And then the new and then the niggas who I'm fighting for that I'm putting on the DVD, they mad at me. Cause they ain't like they order on the DVD. You put me in the seventh spot or you put me at number 20. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, who am I fighting for? That's all I really got to say. ForbesDVD.com, you already know. Uh, November 5th, Step Your Bars Up Showcase. 
to perform at the showcase, Forbes DVD Showcase at gmail.com. That's Forbes DVD Showcase at gmail.com. Subscribe to this YouTube Forbes DVD promo. Um, Forbes DVD Volume 3 will be out soon. I'm scripting that, working on that now. Um, and the showcase is always November 5th. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but you know how I do. Um, the showcase is also MREC Born Day celebration, too. Not His birthday is not that day, but it's in that time frame. So we said, fuck it. Let's just put everything together. You know how when you was little kids and shit, and your cousin's birthday is close to your other cousin? His shit might be 20 days later. they like, fuck that. Put everybody's birthday together. That's what we did, because we could do that. You know what I'm saying? Forbes DVD. We for y'all, we for the culture, but I'm starting to question who I'm fighting for because the people who I'm fighting for is fighting me. That's counterproductive. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is, man. And everybody who support, man, thank you for your support. Peace.